Kloster Index Bergbock Hell. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one here today from Zifazaland. This is the Kloster Andex Bergbock Hell. I've had quite a few beers from the Kloster Andex Brewery, which is, believe it or not, a genuine monastery brewery. And guess what? There's not one picture of a monk on the bottle. So that's always a good sign because I was making this point in a, in a I think it was another video about, was it the Kapuziner beer? Or was it the, the Mernschhof? It was one of them two German ones. And the Belgians are guilty of this as well. But it's, the point I was making was that genuine monastery brewers do not put pictures of monks on the label. They're usually very, very simple labels. They don't go in for this marketing crap that a lot of non-monastery brewers do, or those who have got some tenuous link to a monastery do. So it's always a good sign when you know you get a genuine monastery brewer. Anyway, enough about that. Kloster Andex. This is their Bergbock Hell. Bergbock Hell. If you translated that literally, that would mean mountain goat light. But of course, Bock in a certain German dialect does sound like goat or billy goat, hence the reason you do get a lot of the uh, doppelbox have, uh, I'll just give an example here. Uh, there is, and guess what, I can't find one. What a twat. I used to have, um, is it up there? Yeah, there we go. Right. So, doppelbox in, Usually in Bavaria, they, they have this ram on the front. And the reason being is Bock, or the way it's pronounced in Bavarian, because Bavarians do have quite a, a very distinct accent compared to the rest of Germany. And it sounds like goat to everyone else, Bock, of course. And uh, that's why that's on there. This is a Berg Bock hell. Bock usually signifies a strong beer. Berg, of course, in German means mountain, so strong mountain beer. You could argue that it would, could be translated as. I'm not going to argue, especially not with a German, about how they should speak their language. Who won the bloody war anyway? But there you go. Uh, this is quite an interesting beer because, uh, sorry, this is quite an interesting brewery because they've been going since 1455. They are a genuine monastery brewery. They are Benedictine monks, or that's the order that they follow. They are in the true tradition of a monastery brewery. They only brew for the upkeep of the monastery, not for profit. And, you know, they all the money goes back into either the brewing, the upkeep of the monastery, or if there's any leftover, a lot of these monasteries will help out projects outside the community or inside the community and generally for good causes. So that's quite um, that's quite commendable in in my opinion. Uh, they're um, as I say they, they do quite a range of beers and they're really good. I've tried their fold beer, I've tried the Dunkel that they do which was really nice and I saw this the other day and I thought I have to give that a go because not only is it from a good brewery but is it fucking super strong as well. So let's get this investigated. Right, 500 mil bowl, 6.9%. So that's the equivalent of a doppel bock. Usually they're around that sort of mark. Uh, this is, of course, isn't a doppel bock because it hasn't got that caramel malt in it. This says hell on the side. So I'm, pres I'm, a pr I'm presuming, fucking hell, I haven't even had a beer yet. Can I only tell? I'm presuming this is going to be a light coloured 
strong lager. And it looks quite nice. They've used uh, they've of course they conf it confines to the Reinheitsgebot, bot and it contains Hallertau hops, one of the German noble hops. Most Bavarian brewers use that hop that is grown in the region and it does give the beer a distinct flavour. Now of course there's four German noble hops, or four noble hops if you like, they're all German. Well, you could argue that one of them isn't the Sartz hops. You could argue that's sort of Czech, a Czech hop if, if you like. But Hallertau certainly is a noble hop and it is one of the most popular in Germany, certainly in Bavaria. It's got a very nice herbal, bit of earth and a little touch of spice on there and it goes supremely well with the malts that they use. Now this brewery don't give a brew sheet for their beers but they do say that they use three different types of hops in their beers. They use Munich malt, they use Pilsner malt and they use Vienna malt which are all light coloured, very flavoursome and you know if they're brewing darker beer they will roast them to various degrees but they're all good and they're used in the best German beers. So with that in mind Let's get this open, let's see what's going on. Right, get ye oldie cap off. I've tried the vice beer from these as well, the vice beer was pretty good too. There's the cap. It's a brass coloured cap with the, the Abbey sort of coat of arms on it. Here you go, one for the collection. Let's get this into a glass, see what gives. Yeah, it's a light beer. A very strong light beer too. What we're getting in the nose. Lovely, lovely head on that by the way, to say. Oh, beautiful. Lovely sweet malt, bread, dough type malt. Nice honey notes coming from the yeast. But there's that earthy, earth and spice. You can't mistake it. You get it in all these good Bavarian beers and it just smells divine. It smells very clean, if you can imagine that. But you always get it from them Hallertau hops if they're used correctly with the right, right yeast and malt. Oh, that's gorgeous. So, it's a, a mixture of honey, earth, spice, bread and dough. And here it is in the glass. Looks very nice. Nice darker st straw colour than normal. Loads of carbonation in that. And uh, one and a half finger foamy white head. Very nice indeed. Let's get it down the hatch. Some vol, as they say in Germany. Very nice. Oh, it's lovely. That is gorgeous. Lots of. <laughs> Lots of bread and dough type malts in there. A lot of honey type sweetness that's coming from the yeast. A little touch of the earth and spice from the Hallertau. And then of course the finish is just a, a whole host of bread and doughy type malts, sweet malts, coupled with that sweet yeast. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's really good. But, and here's the but, at 6.9% you would be expecting some ethanol on that. And there isn't. And that is very dangerous because this is very, very drinkable. It has got a very drinkable type Moorish flavour that you get from them, you know, them lower ABV Bavarian Hellases and some of the Pilsners as well. 
but this stuff is quite dangerous because it doesn't taste strong. There's no ethanol that I can make out in there. There is something there, and I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's not a flavor, it's like a warmth when it goes down. And of course that is, that would be the ethanol, but you can't taste it. It's just drowned out completely by that <clears throat> nice honey malt, that nice honey and bread flavor. And then on the aftertaste, you've got more of the same, but with a little bit of earth and, earth and spice. This is really nice. And it just gets nicer as it go as it's going down. It really doesn't taste like it's six point nine percent. I think this is probably one of the best ones I've had from the Andex Brewery. Oh, now I've tried the I've got them down here somewhere. This is let's show off our bottles day. Um, what we've got down here? Yeah, I've got the Andex Vice beer. That was quite nice. That was nice, but without the yeast, it wasn't all that. And I've got the fold beer in there as well, which is like a Hellas. And it's called a fold beer because, well, originally it was because to avoid the tax on a certain gravity of beer. So the gravity wouldn't go over. It had nothing to do with the ABV, apparently. It was just to do with the gravity on the beer. You would pay more tax on beer over a certain gravity they would keep the gravity down to avoid paying that tax and that's why it got the distinction or the name full beer but it's just like a hellas that's all it is it's a hellas with a lower gravity if you like which to me i can't really tell the difference to be honest it just tastes really good but this stuff this is really good There's just no trace of that ethanol on there at all. It's just sweet, it's that sweet malt, which is a combination of the yeast and the malt, the Hallertau hops, and very nice mouthfeel too, and just a lovely finish on the end, and a, a sweet bread dough type finish. It's absolutely gorgeous, supremely drinkable, highly fucking dangerous if you're knocking back a few of these you've got to realize you're drinking a seven percent beer it will not feel like that if you crack a few of these open in the summer you've got to be really careful because that will hit you you'll get belgian legs as i call them that's when you you know you're sipping a really high abv beer and it's going down great and you go to get up and that's it the world falls away from you <laughs> been there done that printed the t-shirts this is lovely, really like this. This is probably the best one from the Cluster Andex that I've tried. I am definitely gonna be buying this one again. So what's the verdict on the Cluster Andex Berg Bock Hell? In my opinion, this is the best one I've tried from them. It is really good, supremely drinkable, got some lovely flavors going on there. It really has. There, it, I, I can't complain about anything. The mouthfeel is superb. The flavors are great. There is no ethanol on there at all, which makes it supremely drinkable. You do not know you are drinking a 6.9% ABV beer, which is dangerous <laughs> in a good way or a bad way. But I have to say, this is lovely. This is a really nice one. I am gonna give that, I have to give it a 10 out of 10 because it's lovely. There's, there's nothing I can knock a mark off for. Even the price. The price on this is not, is not too bad. I think I got this from the Bavarian Brewer, Brewing Company or Bavarian Brew Company, I think it's called. And um, I think it was under three pound. And for a beer of this quality, you cannot go wrong. It's not the best Hellas in the world, but at 6.9%, you, you know, you, you're gonna have to make sacrifices you know, for that ethanol, you maybe you need to put a little bit more, well, you do need to put a little more yeast in to get that high ABV. That's the reason why it's a little bit sweeter, but it's lovely. And it conforms to the Reinheitsker bot, so there's no nasties in there at all. All the flavor in there is coming from the yeast and the mixture of hops and malt. That is a supreme effort. 
it's 10 out of 10. I urge you to get some of this. Buy this before you buy any other Andex beer if you've not bought any other Andex beers before. This is the best one. The others are not bad, don't get me wrong, but they don't compare to this. And remember, beer is working class champagne.